Satraukumu par kompānijas Air Baltic pirmā pusgada finanšu rādītājiem pastiprināja Igauņu aviācijas eksperta Tomasa Petersona kritika, ka uzņēmums it kā finansāli tuvojoties sabrukumam. Tiesa šiem apgalvojumiem nepiekrīta ne finanšu nozaras eksperti, ne arī pati kompānija. Un šorīt plašāk runāsim par to, kāda ir Air Baltic finanšu situācija, ieceras iegādāties jaunas lidmašīnas un izveidot jaunas apkalpes bāzes, arī par lidojumu drošību un reisu ierobežojumiem. Intervija ar Air Baltic prezidentu un izpildu direktoru Martinu Gaus, kurš mums pievienojas studi Jā. Good morning. Labrīt. Uh, let's start with the geopolitical context and the flight safety. Flights to Tel Aviv have been uh, cancelled uh, until 1st of September. Are there any plans to reopen them again any soon? Around as, the 1st of September? As soon as it is safe, we will fly to Tel Aviv. But at the moment and every day we evaluate the situation and then take a decision f which flights we have to cancel because the situation is considered not to be safe. And as long as it is not safe, Air Baltic cannot fly. So but there is still possibility that... Yes, that la mm -hmm. that's why we only cancel now at the beginning of September. And of course, if the situation changes, we will fly again. But at the moment, we consider it not to be safe. Yeah, you have mentioned that the company is flexible in these decisions, but uh, they definitely have some uh, financial impact as well. So you cannot so easily shut down and reopen some, some routes. Uh, how, what, what impact does it leave to the company? No, it leaves several hundred thousand, uh, which we are not making in income, and we have to. The p passengers still have to be transported via other uh, airports. Uh, but that is the business we do. Uh, we fly now per week 1,700 flights, and Tel Aviv is is one flight, and we have to deal with it. But that is when you are a larger airline, then these things happen, uh, and we are dealing with it in in light of our operation. Uh, what uh, concerning these flights around the Ukrainian and uh, Russian uh, airspace? So this is this. Has been has become really a new normality you have got used to already? Uh, yes, it's a still a cost item, so we are disadvantaged. Air Baltic uh, being close to the border has more disadvantage than other airlines. A lot of our flights fly around it. But now, after more than two years, uh, it's part of the business. If there is ever the chance to fly again through this airspace in Ukraine, it will reduce Air Baltic's cost. But today, that's part of the business. Also, it was recently announced that the Air Baltic will establish new crew bases in our neighbor countries, in Tallinn and Vilnius, in November. Uh, what is the ultimate need to establish them, and also how much will it cost? Uh, it will reduce our cost because we fly a lot out of Vilnius uh, and Tallinn and the crews have to fly there on an aircraft and then fly the aircraft from Tallinn and Vilnius and by basing people there they will be still employed in Latvia but they can overnight there uh, and then with that we reduce our cost because we can use the crews better. But some investment is still needed, right? No, they, because so far we, people were in the hotel and then they can stay at home when they are local uh, and come from their home and then they fly the aircraft which is parked overnight there. So it's reducing our cost and complexity. So creating the crew base as such doesn't need any, ex doesn't take any expenses? No, it's a minimal expense because you save money as before you were going to the hotel and now you're saving the hotel and there's no, the, the base itself is already there because the aircraft is overnighting and the mechanical uh, stuff is there, but the crews had to come either with the plane and take the plane then to the destination or they came from the hotel and by having people based there permanent um, is reducing our cost. Have you calculated by how much? Uh, it, no, I don't have it at heart, but it's a significant amount because mm -hmm. we have already three aircraft or four aircraft in Tallinn and two aircraft in Vilnius, and we will be growing in all bases, in Riga, Tallinn and Vilnius. Mm -hmm. uh, we have also read this, that there will be some temporary bases in Europe uh, next year, Brussels, Munich, Vienna. Um, this is uh, something similar to the Baltic? We prepare for the wet lease out business because we have a long-term contract with the Lufthansa Group and the Lufthansa Group has the chance to base our aircraft in different airports and for that we are also looking how to optimize the cost so that's a preparation already for next year. Speaking of daily operations, about uh, vacancies uh, in the company, what is the situation? Uh, do you uh, need some additional workforce at some level or you are fully set? No, we are not set. We are now at 2,600 employees and we are growing further. We ordered just uh, two weeks ago another 10 planes for the future. So the total number of planes will be 100 in 2030. And uh, for all these planes, we need a lot of stuff. So we are recruiting every year. And the total number we target by the year 2030 is now 4,500 employees. 
And that means we have to still recruit around 2,000 employees. So this is ongoing. And we are doing this um, in all the markets where we can recruit. Locally, of course, because we are Latvian airline and, and people are employed in Latvia. But we also try to reach out because not all experts are available here. Mm. You mentioned that you ordered 10 more planes. Uh, are you going to buy some more or this is the final line for now? Uh, at the moment, uh, this is what we could do now, but we have more purchase rights, options to mm -hmm. buy more planes. And uh, in the future, we will exercise more options, yeah. Okay, and does this mean that you will be able to make all the flights yourself with your own aircraft? That would be already, this year was already planned to do this, it didn't work. Yep. And the current forecast for the engine shortage is that it will take another one to two years. That's what Pratt & Whitney Hopefully. says to the world. And uh, until this time, we will have occasionally others flying for us. Uh, as we, we try to minimize it, this summer it's much better. But uh, over the next two years, we might still see this and then the situation should normalize. Uh, talking about planes and their equipment, uh, uh, you have tested the Starlink Internet this year, but uh, when it will be actually become available uh, for passengers on a regular basis, are there any structured plans in this? Yeah, we have the last quarter of this year. At the moment, we are waiting for the permission from the European Aviation Safety Agency to install it on board the aircraft because we are the first airline in Europe to have that. And when we have that permission to install it, we will roll it out so it should be available for passengers at the beginning of next year latest, maybe even at the end of this year. The tests have been successful, but we're waiting for permission to install. So you don't uh, need to meet any criteria anymore, just this is technical procedure that has this, to be undergone? Yes, we, we need the permission to install, but technically it's already working, but uh, in, in, in aviation you need always a permission if you are changing something on the aircraft. And how do you manage to provide uh, aircraft maintenance and parts? Is this a uh, significant obstacle uh, to, be, uh, to better performance and results? We have already, Air Baltic is uh, one of the few airlines which can do maintenance on our own and we're increasing our maintenance staff significant. We open a technical academy this week actually where we also recruit people, work together with universities. Um, spare parts is also something Air Baltic uh, is looking into in the future how to improve it as we have the largest fleet in Europe of Airbus A220-300. We also need the most parts uh, and that is a process if we double in size in the next five years uh, where we have a plan on how to ensure that in the future we have sufficient spare parts. The industry still is struggling, uh, that's coming from the COVID time, to provide sufficient uh, spare parts. That's why we some engines, for example, why we sometimes need wet leases. But uh, the industry also sees that in one to two years that situation should be better. And talking also about the financial situation, what are the reasons for the losses of almost 89 million in the first half of this year? If we are comparing to this, uh, this, the same uh, position last year, uh, there were no losses. Yes, yeah, so we, we, uh, when we did the investor call, which is on the website, because we do this to the financial investors, we explained it in very detail and it was very well received. So we had a record income, revenue, record EBITDA, record passengers in our history. So the airline is growing. But we also showed the net result with 88.8 .8 million. And we explained the details where this comes from. And it is mainly paper losses. So it's not cash. It is, for example, the exchange rate of the dollar. It's a revaluation. It is a write-off, a depreciation of, of engine maintenance. So these things were explained. And the result of, this resu of these record results we showed, including this net result, was that the bond price of Air Baltic went up. So the finan financial world took that uh, very positive. And uh, with that, of course, we are very satisfied. Unfortunately, when you, when you have the word loss, people immediately turn negative. Air Baltic is doing very well with new record results. Uh, and we made that also clear in the investor call. Um, if the bond price goes up, that's the, the financial investors understand that that's the best proof for it. You mentioned bonds. Uh, we also talked quite a lot of them about this uh, issue uh, in May when these uh, bonds <clears throat> for 340 million were released and uh, with the historically highest rate, by the way, 14.5%. 14, uh, 14, uh, mm, will this high price pay off? I mean, about the um, uh, payments that the uh, airline has to pay every year for this. So we pay pay about 50 million euros for the bond every year. 
that's the price. We just last week paid also to the Latvian state a couple of million because we pay every quarter the interest rate. The bond is uh, priced very high at the moment, so it's very good. People believe that Air Baltic has no problem paying it. Otherwise, the bond price would go down. So uh, we are very positive about it because we make a total this year of income of 750 million and this income comes only from passenger tickets and we are paying with this 50 million in interest. The interest rate is high, but it is calculated in our business plan with that high interest rate. Okay. If we go further on the, on the financing, on the IPO which we are planning, we're going to refinance this bond in the future with a bond with less interest rate. But we're very happy that we were successful placing it and we are growing and in the future we will be repaying the bond mm -hmm. every quarter, but we will also refinance the bond in the future. How this uh, bond, uh, these millions, this money is actually working for the company uh, at this point. So you, for enlargement, for stabilization, for paying, uh, refinancing debts. So how this uh, basically So from working? the 340 million, we paid 200 million for the old bondholders and 140 million we take for the future growth. So we, for example, we buy airplanes and overall the, we always have this argument that the taxpayer is paying for Air Baltic. No, we are actually paying taxes to the state. There is nobody paying to Air Baltic money. The last time uh, the taxpayer paid was in the COVID time. Today, Air Baltic is paying taxes. Air Baltic is paying interest for the bond. And overall, the growing company, the largest Baltic airline now, is a positive uh, business for the Latvian state. But if, when I read the media, I always think somebody is paying for us. We are using the money which make, we make from passenger tickets. And with that, we are paying uh, all the bills. It, this year alone, 750 million. This is not taxpayers' money. This is money which Air Baltic pays uh, to run its business. You also mentioned uh, plans about IPO. So I understand there is no question anymore about if there is a plan. It's when. Yeah, there was a decision taken in the COVID time how Air Baltic would. Uh, in the future solve this and uh, it was decided that we would go in the future for an IPO. Now we are in the preparation for an IPO with everything which you need to do, but we have not announced the date of an IPO. This has not happened yet, but we are preparing and w when we can say more about it then we will, but currently we are in this preparation phase. Maybe it can be next year? Uh, it, could, it could be already in the second half of this year. That is technically possible, but it could also be next year. This depends on the markets. This depends on the advice we get at what is the right time. But Air Baltic is preparing. We also have to educate the public because everybody then can become a shareholder of Air Baltic. Mm. One thing I would like to ask, uh, what are the reasons to your mind, uh, what made the uh, former head of Estonian Air, Thomas Peterson, so critical about sayings about Air Baltic, about uh, financial breakdown, etc., etc., that was uh, like contrasted by you and by financial experts as well. You mentioned the company is growing and, and uh, positively assessed by investors. So, so where these uh, statements did actually come from, why? The, there's one word, it's called envy, very big envy. If you lost two airlines already and you were responsible for it and then you have to look in the neighboring state where there's the largest airline being built at the same time in the Baltic states. We are the number one airline today in Estonia. We are de facto their national carrier because we are the largest airline ensuring connectivity. We are the largest carrier in all Baltic states and then you have a guy who comes and says this is bad. I would say the only word for that is envy and I clarified it in Estonia because there was a misperception of how important we are. And if you listen to the airport, then they know how important we are in Tallinn. Because Air Baltic, without Air Baltic, it would be very difficult to as access Estonia. We fly already 25 routes from Estonia. Can such announcements uh, affect uh, air, uh, uh, your um, company's um, uh, prestige? Uh, yeah, locally, of any, any bad news is not good for you. But if we look at Air Baltic, then uh, I think we've gone through a lot of difficult times. Today we go for new record results. We, we transport millions of passengers. Uh, we already transported to Estonia this year more than half a million passengers. So we are very positive. Uh, if somebody wants to criticize Air Baltic, the Latvian national airline, which is a European success story, then they should first look at their own home and see what they have done. And especially if somebody who was a failure 
in his business should maybe not say something negative about the neighboring's airline, which is actually very successful. So I think um, there was a big envy and misunderstandings because they did not really understand the financial results. Maybe that is the reason why it didn't work for them. Yeah, because we explain it publicly uh, for quite a while now and everybody can look it up on the mm. website. Well, there was not so much the understanding on how to do it. Okay, we do hope that uh, everything goes well with uh, all the plans, uh, quite widely structured. And thank you for uh, having time with us and explaining that to our viewers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Paldies.